Okay, I'm going to show you how I made a fun little card with the Send and Cheer Stamp Set Bundle from Stampin' Up. And um, yeah, so it's just, it's a fun little bundle um, and it's a cute one. <laughs> and it's one of those that's in the mini catalog. And I do have to admit, before uh, I get started, the paper, the designer paper that I used on this is called um, Shining Christmas. And here in the U.S., I just looked like five minutes before I went to go live at the uh, inventory report and this paper has just sold out. <laughs> so I'm a little sad about that. But the good news is that um, the Joy of Christmas designer series paper is still available and it's in stock. And it actually would be a perfect substitute because it's got very similar colors in it. So you could definitely swap out and use the um, Joy of Christmas designer series paper instead of this one that I used on it. So like I said, that's the one nice thing about Christmas is that it's, yeah, it's usually, you know, you can kind of mix and match and a lot of the papers have similar color schemes. So this one, like I said, um, the paper is definitely not specific to the card. So um, go grab the Joy of Christmas paper and use that instead and you'll be you'll be all set. So anyway, <laughs> so this is the card we're going to be making today. It's just a fun little Christmas one, pretty quick and easy to put together. A couple little die cuts, a uh, little bit of stamping, and that's going to be it. So we'll be uh, getting done hopefully pretty quickly today. So I see Mary is here and Karen and Sherry and Connie and Roxanne and Carol and Carol and Mary Ruth and Drew. So thanks everybody for hopping in. I appreciate you being here. Um, so stamp set. This is the Sending Cheer stamp set and it's actually bundled with some dies. And um, like I said, it's just kind of cute for the holidays. Love the little gingerbread man. Um, there's a one that looks like an envelope. Um, these are actually the, the stamp set is designed or the tags the tag set. The, the die set is designed to create tags. So all of the little um, larger dies in here, not the littler ones, larger dies all have a little um, hole in the top of them. So you can make them into tags or you can do, I made a gingerbread card not too long ago and um, I just snipped off the top so you don't have to leave it as a tag, but it's cute. They're really, like I said, they're, they're um, cute little uh, dies that coordinate with it. So we have a die that cuts out the stocking, one that cuts out the gingerbread man. Um, this one cuts out the, the one that looks like the envelope. This one will cut out your little package. So, um, and then this one actually will create a Santa hat. So you kind of have to envision it a little, but <laughs> you basically can put, there's a little, you know, so you got the little, the little ball for the Santa hat and then the little fluff that goes around the edge, whatever that is. And then, you know, like I said, little Santa hat there. And um, there's some circle ones and um, a longer kind of, a couple of these, like the, this one will fit with a couple of sentiments. This one fits with a couple of the sentiments. So it's a cute little set. So anyway, like I said, a, definitely a good one and a fun one to play with. So hey, Candy and Diana and Tina, um, glad y'all are here. So, uh, so yeah, so this is a, it's a cute little set, um, and definitely one you should have in your stash of things. It is in the current Stamp It Up mini catalog, so, um, it should be around until the end of December, and after that, hopefully it'll stick around a little longer, but you just never know, so make sure you're grabbing it before the end of December so you can make sure you get it. A um, couple other things that I used on this, on the inside of the card, I used one of the sentiments, which is the To You and Yours This Christmas from the Brightest Glow stamp set. And this is one that is in the Stampin' Up! annual catalog right now. So there are a handful of Christmas items in there, not very many, um, but this is one of them. And there is a die set that coordinates with it, but obviously I didn't use the die set today because it's just stamped on the inside of the card. And then um, die sets that I did use, in addition to the um, Sending Cheer stamp set and dies, I used the All About, All, All That dies. <laughs> it's such a strange name and I get tripped up on it every time. So hey, Julie, thanks for joining. All That dies. And this is a set that is from the, the current annual catalog. And I just used a little oval here to cut out my sentiment. And then I also used the Stylish Shapes dies. I used the largest of the circle dies to cut out the little circle that's underneath my stocking. So, um, so that's it. All right. A uh, couple things before we get going. Um, I just announced today that I'm doing a fun little um, envelope and gift packaging stock up before the holidays because I know at least if you're like me, I go through tons of envelopes at this time of year. Sending out all those Christmas cards. Always need gift packaging ideas as well. So for anybody that orders um, with me, $50 or greater between now and the end of October, um, you get to take a pick of a free pack of envelopes, uh, cards and envelopes, uh, note cards and envelopes, memories and more card pack, acetate card boxes, treat bags, treat boxes, 
all those things, you get to pick one of those for free. And that's in addition to your normal $10 thank you gift. And you're also going to earn reward points from me. So um, if you have questions about any of that, uh, holler at me and let me know. Um, the details are on my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com. I posted it today, uh, which is October 24th. So you can find that blog post. Um, you'll be able to, to find all the details. And I will definitely link up to the blog post uh, in when I post this card as well. So you'll be able to find all the details then. So let me know if you have questions about that. And uh, get your orders in before the end of October and you'll be all set. And also, right now in October, Stampin' Up! has a really awesome joining promotion going on. So hey, Robin and Karen, thanks for joining. Um, so the, they are doing a, for their 35th anniversary, if you are not currently a demonstrator, it's an excellent time to join. This is one of the best joining promotions I think I've ever seen. And I've been around for a minute or 12 years. <laughs> so, um, so if you join during the month of October, you get your choice of either paying 35% less for your starter kit or you get to pick 35% more for free in your starter kit. So if you choose the pay less version, um, you still get to pick $125 worth of Stampin' Up! merchandise for your starter kit, but you're only gonna pay $64.35 for it rather than $99. The kit will ship for free. You will have to pay tax if that applies in your area, but other than that, that's it. So it ships for free, can't get any better deal than that. Um, if you choose the 35% more, then you, get, you will um, pay the $99 that you normally would. And and instead of $125, you get to pick $168.75 worth of Stampin' Up! merchandise in your starter kit. So all that, um, plus it ships for free. You're going to get some catalogs. And uh, yeah, so it's a really great deal. And then, but wait, there's more. Um, and then the, you also are going to get registered for the On Stage at Home event, which is happening on November 11th. And it is like a kind of a mini Stampin' Up! convention. Um, it's introducing the new spring catalog, the new January to April mini catalog. Um, and you'll get to pre-order from that uh, because you went to the event. So the event is uh, on November 11th and you're automatically registered for free for that event um, as part of the joining special. So it's a really great time to join. Please let me know if you have questions about it. We'd love to have you come hang out on our team. Um, we are pretty relaxed, uh, no pushy sales. Uh, we just like to get together, stamp and have fun. So. Um, and then last thing, just want to always remind you to take a peek at those online exclusives. So when you are um, out there in the online store putting in your orders um, so that you're not missing out on anything like this paper that just ran out today. <laughs> so, all right. Um, there are some new online exclusives that are coming on November 7th. A couple of them are the Meandering Meadows Sweet Collection and the um, Fluffiest Friends Bundle. These items you actually can add as part of your starter kit if you join now because they're available for pre-order. So... Um, uh, why just 35% off and why not 40? Well, because it is their 35th anniversary. And maybe when they get to um, 40 years, they'll do a 40% off. I don't know. So anyway, so that is why it is 35. <laughs> so, okay, let's get going on the card. So um, we've got a cherry cobbler card base. And this one I have cut to uh, four and a quarter by 11 and scored it at five and a half. This card will also work on your regular book fold cards. So if you prefer the five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter down the side, this card will work on that. So you can pick your favorite card base. I just happen to prefer the um, longer card bases. So that is why I do, you know, why I've done mine this way. So, but it's up to you, whatever you want to do. Um, then I've got a piece of the Shining Christmas Designer Series paper. And I don't, some of you probably missed this when I first started. Unfortunately, the paper within the last, it had to have been within the last hour, has sold out <laughs> from uh, Stampin' Up. So there, at least in the U.S., I, other countries it may still be available, but it has sold out. It was one of the online exclusive items that was available while supplies lasted. And supplies apparently only lasted until today, about an hour ago. So, but as I said earlier, the um, Joy of Christmas Designer Series paper is actually a really great uh, substitute for this. It's got all the same or similar colors in it, so you can really easily make the same card, just swap out the paper. So, ah, okay, no problem, Drew. So like I said, it's, yeah, I'm, I may not have said it because I know that it's 35 years, but sometimes I get busy yakking and then I forget what I have and haven't said. <laughs> and so, yep, that is why it is, because it's their 35th anniversary. So, all right, so the designer paper is cut to three and seven eighths by five and an eighth, and I'm gonna adhere it to a panel of basic white cardstock that I have cut to four by five and a quarter. 
All of the details for this are going to be on my blog tomorrow, and I will link up to, um, directly to the blog post when it goes live around 8 o'clock in the morning Eastern time um, tomorrow, which is Wednesday. Um, so you'll be able to take a look at all the details, come back, take a peek at it if you'd like. Um, there will be a printable PDF tutorial out there as well, so you'll be able to find all the information then. Uh, then I've got... Um, Stampin' Dimensionals that I'm going to go ahead and stick this to the card front with. Or my chopped in half Stampin' Dimensionals. So, yeah, I don't, I do half ones. So, there. <laughs> All right. I'm going to stick this to my uh, card front. Hopefully get it somewhat straight. And then I have a piece of the, uh, again, Shining Brightly Designer Series paper. Um, shining, Shining Brightly. Shining Christmas, because there's a Shining Brightly, and this is not it. So Shining Christmas Designer Series paper. And um, this is cut to about two and a half by five. And then I just took the edge of it and, and chopped it at an angle um, with my paper trimmer. There's no specific measurement on it. I just put it in there kind of sideways until I thought, hmm, that angle looks good, and went with the trimmer. So um, we're just going to use a little stamp and seal on that to adhere it to the card front. And just going to take it and I'm going to try to line it up here on the um, so that it's even along the top and even along the edge. There we go. So we got that stuck to the card front. And then ahead of time, I did a little bit of die cutting, not a whole lot of it this time, um, but I cut with, from basic white one of the circles from uh, Stylish Shapes dies. This is the largest circle in the, the die set. And we are going to stick that with the, my little chopped up stamp of dimensionals to the card front as well. So, hey, Joan, thanks for hopping in. A better job of getting panels straight than me. I don't know. Some days I do better than others, Karen. So <laughs> I just try to take a minute and line them up. And sometimes when I think they're lined up perfectly, then I stop at the end of the card and I realize it's all crazily corrected. And, you know, sometimes I start over, sometimes I don't. <laughs> So, all right, so I'm going to take this, and it's kind of roughly centered right to left, um, and then obviously slid up just a little bit towards the top. So, again, no specific measurement. If you want it over to one side or the other, you can certainly do that. All right, uh, let me grab my a little piece of paper. Actually, I'm going to grab two little pieces of paper here while I'm at it. Because instead of having one piece, apparently I had two small ones. So I figured I'd use those. Uh, basic white cardstock, and I've got cherry cobbler ink. And then this is the stocking image from the um, Sending Cheer stamp set. And we're just going to ink that up with cherry cobbler ink. And um, I'll show you one little thing with this stamp set. You're going to want to make sure that when you stamp the stocking, you're stamping it down a little bit lower on the piece of cardstock that you're stamping it on. And I'll show you why in just a second, because I messed it up the first time. And so <laughs> I don't want you to do the same thing. <laughs> so the die actually cuts out the little, um, I don't know, the like the the fluffy part that goes around the top. And again, I'm sure there's a term for it. Um, but just make sure that you leave enough space at the top of your paper when you're stamping it so that you can die cut it. Because like I said, the first time I had it slid up a little bit too close to the cuff. There you go, see? <laughs> that fluffy thing. So the uh, the cuff of the stocking. Um, just make sure you leave a little bit of space up there for that because the first time I had it a little too close to the top and then it cut like the little loop thing was gone and it looked a little weird because it was, yeah. So, all right, so we got that one done. Then I'm going to grab the little berry image and, again, cherry cobbler ink. And then we're going to close that up so I don't stick my fingers in it. And then I've got the holly leaf image and mossy meadow ink. And we're going to stamp that here near the berries. And then I'm going to close that one up too. And then I'm going to grab the dies that coordinate with it. So I've got the holly leaf and the berry dies. So we're going to take this, this, and this over to the die cutting machine. And I will be back in just one second. So, all right. Okay, getting it lined up quick. There's my little stocking die cut. And I'll put that die back before I totally lose that. And then, all 
All right, and there are my little holly dies and my little die cut pieces there. And then ahead of time, and hopefully I have not lost, oh, there, we're good. <laughs> ahead of time, I cut from Mossy Meadow cardstock a couple of little um, accessory pieces for the stockings. So there is uh, this die that has two pieces to it, actually, and it cuts the, the toe part and the heel part. And then there is this that's, well, I don't know if it's a cuff that's also on the, the yeah, I mean, I guess call it a cuff because it's, yeah, we did call it a cuff already. <laughs> so there, uh, all right, I'm not losing my mind, only just a little. Okay, so got the little cuff. And we're going to take a little bit of liquid glue and we're just going to stick that cuff to the die cut stocking. And it does line up reasonably well. So I'm just going to take it and hold it up a second and try to get it on here as straight as I can get it because it fits basically almost perfectly on top of the die cut. So there we go. I think I got it on there pretty well. So that fits on there. And then... Um, I think that I did these the right way around. When I was looking at it, I started out, I was thinking that this was the heel, but it didn't fit very well, I didn't think, on here. It didn't, the rounding part wasn't right. So then I went, oh, I think that's the toe. So that is my, my theory on it, and I'm sticking with it. And if it works better for you to do it the other way around, I believe that this is the toe, the, the bigger piece, because it fit better on the, the stamped image. Oop, let me get on there the right way. Whoop. I slid it too far. I don't want the cherry cobbler peeking out the end there. And then I'm gonna grab the little heel piece and add a little bit of liquid glue to that as well, and just a very little bit, and put it over the heel of the stocking. So there we go. Hopefully, whoop, oh, oh, twisted it, oh, 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 see? Liquid glue and I, we're not friends. <laughs> So there we go. Okay, I think I have it stuck down. Um, and I don't want to mess around with it too much because for fear that I'll mess it up again. And then we've got the little berries and the holly leaves. And I'm just going to do the same thing with that. I'm just going to stick them together with a little bit of liquid glue. Um, this piece is big enough that you probably can use a glue dot with it, but I stuck it together with liquid glue. So I'm calling it good and sticking with that plan for uh, putting it together here. All right, then I've got mini glue dots. And we're gonna take those to put everything else together because like I said, y'all know I do not like liquid glue. So I'm gonna take that and stick my little holly piece on the stocking. And then we're also gonna take mini glue dots and adhere the stocking to the card front. And I don't know, you can put three-ish, four-ish, somewhere in that range. So hey, Roberta, thanks for hopping in. I think I'm gonna do four, so I'm gonna do two on the top and two on the bottom and kind of tilt it at a little bit of an angle so it looks kind of like it's hanging. There we go. And we got that on the card front. Uh, next up, I did a little stamping for the sentiment. So this is Cherry Cobbler cardstock, and I'm gonna use the embossing buddy and we're gonna rub it over the cardstock um, just to hopefully get rid of all the fingerprints and things that I've left on it. I've got Versamark ink, and we're gonna do a little heat embossing, so it's gonna get loud for a second in here. But I'm um, gonna ink this up well with my Versamark, stamp it on the piece of cherry cobbler cardstock, and then close that up before I open up my embossing powder. So this is white embossing powder from the Basics embossing powders, and sprinkle that on there. And do it a second time, make sure that I got it well covered, and then gonna go ahead and close that up before I start up the heat tool so I don't send my embossing powder flying everywhere. So the Stampin' Up! heat tool has two settings on it. There's a level one setting for drying. So if you're doing something like watercoloring and wanna speed up the drying process a little bit, um, you can definitely use the level one setting and that will help you out. And then there's a level two setting that I have used or that I'm gonna be using today. And that is the one that we use for heat embossing because it gets a little bit hotter but it does take just a second for the heat tool to heat up warm enough to actually start the embossing process. So that's what I'm doing is just letting it heat up a second. And then I'm gonna turn it here towards my, my uh, stamped image and wait for the, there we go, it's starting to turn. You can see it kind of turns shiny and a bright white and that means that it's done cooking. All right, then I'll give it just a second to cool off um, before I do anything else with it. So 
let me grab now my um, dies. These are the all that dies, and I'm going to use that to die cut my sentiment of sentiment out here. So um, definitely you want to let it cool off before you touch it because you can smear the embossing powder if you don't. Uh, but mine is cooled off so I think we are good to go and I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine so I'll be back in one second. Oop. All right there we go. And I do love this set of dies. Um, there's a coordinating stamp set, and I think it's called He's the Man or something like that. And I don't very use it very often with the stamp set, but I do use the um, sentiment dies, do use this to cut sentiments out fairly often. Um, one thing, and I'm not sure how well it shows in the video, is that, that I love about these dies is that it actually embosses a little edge around it. So it not only cuts it, but it also embosses, which I do love that look. It does that on, on the um, larger scallop circle. It does it on this die, does it on this one, as well as the, the little um, rectangle. So if you don't have this die set, definitely consider getting it. All right, let me get back to my card here. I'm gonna grab a couple more of my little chopped up stamp of dimensionals. And we are gonna stick this together. Just putting a couple of them on the back of this and then I'm gonna take it. And sort of, um, when I put the dimensionals on, I intentionally slid them a little bit towards the center because I knew that I was gonna have this half hanging off my circle that I cut a little bit and I wanted to make sure that it didn't um, stick on the card front strangely. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick it on the card front like that. And then I'm going to grab a couple of, uh, hey, Barbara, thanks for hopping in. No worries at all. So grab a couple of the um, rhinestones here. So I'm going to take one of the larger ones and we'll stick that down here. And eh, I think we can take a medium one and stick it over here. And then one of the little ones and we'll stick it here next to the sentiment. And that's it for the card front. So I think this set is really cute. <laughs> like I said, I love the little gingerbread that I made last week with it too. So um, what die set is that? Uh, the This die set, I'm assuming is the one that you're talking about. Uh, this is the All That dies. And it's a strange name for it. <laughs> but, but that's really the name is All That. If it's one of the other die sets, let me know. And I will uh, pull that back out and let you know which one it is. So all right, so that is the card front. On the inside of the card, I've just got basic white. Um, cardstock and this is cut to about four by five and a quarter and then again my sentiment is from the brightest glow stamp set and we're just going to take that and stamp it in cherry cobbler ink so uh pieces slanted paper oh i'm really glad that you like that because like i said it was it's from a sketch challenge so i can't even take credit for the the um idea to put it slanted but when i put it on there i feel the same way i'm like oh that's awesome <laughs> so i liked the way it looked a lot so all right um, it's got the uh, sentiment, oh, and I didn't mean to close that because I got to stamp the holly berries next to it. So got the sentiment on here, and then we're going to ink up the holly berries also in cherry cobbler ink, stamp those next to the sentiment, and then grab the little holly leaves in mossy meadow ink again, and we'll ink that up, and then we'll tuck the holly leaves in here around the berries. And then I've got a little piece of the um, Shining Christmas Designer Series paper that I trimmed off when I was making my card front that we're gonna stick here to the inside. I'm just gonna run a little stamp and seal along the bottom. This piece is about a half an inch wide. Um, like I said, it's, you, you know, there doesn't need to be any specific, specific measurement on it. Just whatever you have left over when you're trimming, um, stick it on the bottom of your card. And then, yeah, then you're all matchy matchy on the inside too. So, all right. Um, I would like to see what the four box hooked together die looks like. Well, I can hold it out if you want me to, if that will help. I don't know four box hooked together die. I'm not sure that I know what that means, but I'll, I'll pull it out and, and um, see if I can figure out what you're talking about. All right, adding a little stamp and seal and sticking this on the inside of the card. There we go. That's gonna be it for the inside. So there we go. And that's it for the card. So like I said, unfortunately, the designer series paper that I used on this just sold out a few minutes ago. But grab the Joy of Christmas paper, have some fun playing with that. There is, um, there's a shiny paper. Let me grab the name of that one. It's just called Joyful Specialty Paper that coordinates with the Joy of Christmas. Uh, 
designer series papers, so you can definitely mix and match the two of those and get a really similar look if you like the shininess of it. If you don't care much about the shininess of it, then just use the Joy of Christmas designer series paper and grab you know a red and a green panel out of there and you're set to go. So, um, so Robin is asking about, I'm not sure, was it this die set or this die set? So um, the sending cheer, I, I don't, I don't see it. I'm assuming it's this one that you're asking about, Robin. It just cuts argyle. So, I mean, it cuts the outline of two argyles. So there's, um, so it just cuts an argyle. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so that's all there is. Nothing too exciting about that one. So, all right. Uh, so that is it for today. So, um, or the, I, she said, I think she's meaning the argyle one. So, um, Hopefully that answers it. If not, feel free to drop me an email and we'll, we'll uh, get it figured out from there. So, all right. So again, all the details for this card will be on my blog tomorrow. I'll link up directly to the um, blog post as soon as it goes live around eight o'clock in the morning. And so all the details, the PDF, um, everything that I used on it will be listed out there as well. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on anything. I appreciate you all being here. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll plan to be live around two o'clock Eastern time on Friday. And then again, next week, Tuesday around two o'clock Eastern time. Next week, Friday, I'm actually going to be in Georgia at a team retreat, so I will not be going live next week, Friday, but I'm sure we'll have some fun stuff to share from there. So thanks again for joining me. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and we will chat with you all soon.